was paralyzed and all these people uh, were showing up because they thought that Jesus, they heard that Jesus could heal them and this guy had a real problem because he couldn't walk. How many of you have ever had a problem before? Right? He had a real problem. His problem was there's a place I'd like to be and there's a person I'd like to see that just maybe, just maybe could give me a miracle and I can't get there. But he had four friends that were clearly awesome friends and they didn't just pick him up and take him across town, but when they got to the house, the story says that there was such an amazing crowd there that nobody could get in. I mean, they're hanging out the windows. There's people everywhere out on the sidewalk and stuff. And those guys could have easily said, ah, too bad. We're going to have to just not be able to get you in. But these guys would not take no for the answer. And they got creative and they went up and tore the dude's roof off where Jesus was at. Took the, first of all, they took their buddy up on the roof, got the idea, said, what do you say we, te we tear the roof off, tore the guy's roof off, dropped him down through the ceiling. Jesus looks up, and it wasn't the dude's faith that dropped him down. He says The story says he saw the friend's faith, and he looked at that guy and said, you know what, I forgive you of your sins. The religious guy said, who is this guy that thinks he can forgive sins? And Jesus says, to prove to you, which is harder, to say that you can forgive sins or to just to say to this guy, walk. And he said, to prove that I've got the authority to do both, he said, take up your mat and walk. And immediately this paralyzed guy got up and walked off. And it was an amazing, amazing story. Now let me give you a couple thoughts from it. Here's the first one. If you want to get healed, if you want to get better, if you want to get up from where you're down, you got to pick your friends well. Right? This dude did, didn't just have one good friend. He had four good friends. You know what? Some people don't have one good friend. This guy had four. And let's be honest, he may have been a really good guy, but he probably was not an easy guy to be friends with, right? He had transportation problems. <laughs> I mean, for real. I mean, he always needed a lift. Da dum dum, right? He's paralyzed. He couldn't play any sports. If anything, he's the ref, you know? He can't play frisbee. He can't play football. He can't play catch. Man, he's a tough guy to take on a double date. Hey, you girls get these two corners and I'll get the other one. You know, where do you want to get? Well, that's not a real happening double date right there. But give him credit. This guy may have had some problems and some challenges, but he knew how to pick friends. You know what? Some people never get up out of the place that they're in because of the company that they keep. Because of the people that they're hanging out with keep them crippled. The Bible says in one place, bad company corrupts good character. But a good friend, you see it from this story, a good friend will lift you up. A good friend will carry you. I mean, these four friends hauled their buddy across town on a stretcher. It's hot. They're sweating. The streets are crowded. People are pushing and shoving and jockeying for position. But they've got a corner, and they're carrying their boy. Listen, if you want to get up off your mat, you've got to have some friends that will lift you up in a put-down world. you got to have somebody that will carry you in times when you feel like you don't have a chance. There's no way that this guy is getting to Jesus if it weren't for those four friends, right? And they said to themselves, let's go pick up Matt and carry him over to see this Jesus guy. Maybe, just maybe, he'll get a miracle. So a good friend will lift you up when everybody else is putting you down. A good friend will carry you. Secondly, a good friend won't quit on you when the going gets tough. They get to the house, it's packed, it's wall to wall, people hanging out the windows, they can't even see Jesus. I wish we had a recording of their conversation. I would love to hear the process that went through their minds as they thought about what they were going to do next. And I'm here, I'm thinking of Matt on that stretcher and he's probably going, you know what's okay fellas, you tried really hard, you guys are great friends, I appreciate it. You gave it a good shot. Friend number one says, you know what? We came this far. We're not giving up. Anybody got an idea? And friend number two says, well, we could wait till everybody leaves and maybe we'll catch him on the way out. And friend number three says, well, we could try to pass in a prayer request. Maybe we can make a paper airplane that says our buddy's paralyzed and we can throw it in there. And, and friend number four, every group of guys has a, a friend like this. This is the crazy dude, man. I mean, this is the guy that's just a little off. He likes pushing the envelope. He likes, he's the guy that talked you into jumping off the bridge into the, into the river, you know, when you were a teenager. He's the guy that told you to ride your bike down the neighbor's steps when your mom said that's suicide. That guy. 
And he says, you know what, dudes? I say we go up top and we tear the roof off the place and we lower Matt down by some ropes right in front of Jesus. And that's what they did. They didn't think, you know, what if we drop him? What if we fall? What if we get paralyzed? I mean, they just acted and it is so radical. I want you to imagine hosting a party at your house for some famous guy. It's standing room only. You hear footsteps on your roof in the middle of the party. And it's what sounds like a chainsaw fire. And the next thing you know, you don't just hear a chainsaw. You see a chainsaw coming through you, your roof and chunks of wood and shingles are falling down in your house. These guys tore a dude's roof off. They probably don't even know him. That's radical, right? And I could just hear guy number four when they ripped the hole in the roof looking down in. And there's all the dust settling and everything else. And he's like, oh, hey. Are you Jesus? This is our buddy Matt. Would you mind healing him? And I don't know what the homeowner thought, but Jesus loved it. Jesus loved it, man. If you want to get up, if you want to make a change in your life, you need some friends that just won't quit even when you feel like it. You need to let them carry you. You need to follow their lead when they say, we're not quitting on you and we're not letting you quit either. So that's the first takeaway from that story to me is if you want to get out up off of a, a place where you've been stuck when you're down and out, I mean, you've got to pick some good friends to be around you. And the second thing that I want to say to you is if you want to get healed, if you want to get better, if you want to get up when you're down, you don't just pick your friends well. Don't listen to the critics. Don't listen to the critics. Listen to Jesus. Jesus looks up at Matt. He looks up at his friends. The Bible says he saw their faith and he says, friend, he looks down at the, the guy on the mat. He says, friend, your sins are forgiven. And the religious bigwigs at the party, they didn't like it at all. They're like, who does this guy think he is? He must think he's God or something to forgive sins. And he was, but they couldn't believe it. And they're talking behind Jesus' back and Jesus knows it. And he looks at Matt and he says something like this. Matt, don't believe, these guys don't believe that I am who I am. They don't understand that I have the authority to forgive your sin and to get you up off of that mat. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe me or the critics? What do you say, Matt, if you and me, we give these guys something that they'll never forget? On the count of three, Matt, I want you to get up off your mat and walk. And he counts one, two, three. And the Bible says immediately, this guy that's never walked before in his life gets up and he walks and he takes off and his buddy's up on the roof. Can you imagine that party? Dude, that's radical. Matt's up on his sticks. He's walking, man. And they climb down and they join him in a conga line across town and everybody's praising God and it's a fiesta. Listen. Don't listen. If you want to get up out of the place you're in, don't listen to the critics. Critics are a dime a dozen. They'll just keep you down. You look up. You look up into the face of Jesus like Matt did. You let him give you hope. You let him heal you. When he says the word, you get up off of your mat and he might just do a miracle in your life. You get out of the place that you have been stuck in for so long. When Jesus calls... And several times throughout your life, I believe that Jesus will try to call your name. When Jesus calls, you've got a choice to make. You either stay down or you look up and you get up and you reach out and you move forward. And that's why we're here tonight. We believe that Jesus Christ can change your life, that he can get you up out of the places that you are in, even if it feels like it's impossible. This guy never walked a day in his life, but he went home that day dancing. All because he had some friends that got into Jesus and because he didn't listen to the critics. And instead he said, you know what? Maybe just maybe this day is going to be different. Maybe from this time on I can walk. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. And we came out here.